lavish homes, designer wardrobes and luxury vehicles. The Tammy Taylor brand they've built appears to have been good to Piet and Malfoy Yoon. But scratch beneath the surface and it appears the empire is alleged to be built on false promises and stolen dreams. And as we discovered, no shortage of attempted intimidation. Good morning. On the 20th of October, two policemen arrived at our producer's home in Johannesburg. Are you Kate Berry? I am. Kate Can I help you? you? Are you with uh, what do you call Cutter Blanche? That's right. Okay, we've got the protection order here to serve. It soon became clear that something else was at play a blatant act of intimidation, a brazen attempt to interfere with our investigation into a company you may have seen before. Two years ago, Carte Blanche exposed the dodgy dealings of Tammy Taylor Nail South Africa, a business with 46 franchise stores. It's derailed my entire life. I feel like I'm about to lose everything that I've invested. It was the worst experience of my life. The real Tammy Taylor is an American entrepreneur who founded a brand of superior nail products in 1983. The local franchisors were two colorful but compromised characters. Mal Yoon and her husband Piet. Hi, I'm Piet Yoon. Piet Yoon is a disbarred lawyer who was struck off the roll by the Pretoria High Court in 2011. Local Tammy Taylor franchisees had lost millions when stock was withheld, refunds were withheld and their stores were simply confiscated and resold. But Mal Yoon was unapologetic. We're going to keep selling franchises. We're going to keep taking over stores if people don't pay their fees. That is just the way business is. A year later, we were back. This time, Tammy Taylor in the USA was intending to terminate the master license agreement. The Phil Yoons denied this, claiming the email was forged. After our last story, one case study, Jessica, received some of her money back, but is still waiting for a full refund. You may have thought it ended there, but shocking new information has now come to light. We were sent anonymous emails with hard evidence. Insiders approached us eager to expose the truth. And so here is the real reality show of Mal and Piet Yoon. Happy Simelani is a successful businesswoman who bought the Tammy Taylor Mendlin main store in July last year for 2.8 million rand cash. They told me I will be making between 300 and 500k monthly and that sold me. They gave me the financials. It was very convincing. So as a business person, for me, that made sense, you know, only to find out even the financials, I, I don't think that like legit. The financial statements they gave her were for a company with this name, with this registration number, trading as Tammy Taylor Mendlin Main. But the business they registered in Happy's name was this company called Mendlin Main Pty Limited, a shelf company with a different registration number and no financials. This suggests she didn't get the company she paid for. They claimed the monthly rental was just over 21,000 Rand, but the actual rental is over 70,000 Rand, as bank statements prove. And when did you get your store? When did I ever get my store? I don't have a store. There was a handover document that they made me sign to say, OK, we are handing over the saloon to you on the 1st of September. The company was never in my name, which made it very difficult for me to open a bank account. Happy signed a handover document that stipulates should the rental be in arrears for more than 60 days, while the lease agreement is in the name of Melanie Fulyun, the salon may be reclaimed by Tammy Taylor Nail's head office without any refund. I was never given access to the bank account or even have a key to say, Happy, this is your store. This means that all the store's earnings were going into a bank account controlled by head office. When you confront Piet and Mal, what do they say? You know, Mel will always say, I don't know, I don't know. She was the director of Mainland Main. I needed her to resign and appoint me. They only did that 12 October. But Happy was responsible for all salon expenses from the 1st of September. So the six weeks delay in transferring the business into her name meant she couldn't control what was being spent. Then they started sending me a letter of demand uh, for the 
rent that they paid on September. On the 22nd of October, the Full Yoon sent Happy a letter of demand for over 152,000 rand, claiming she was in arrears on two months' rental. It doesn't make sense. Why must I pay for that two months' rental while they've got access to the account? They're the one using and misusing the funds in that same account, and they're misusing the funds deliberately so that I will be left with nothing. This meant she was now in breach of the handover agreement she'd signed, which meant the Full Yoons could reclaim the store. In a written response to carte blanche, Mal Full Yoon states, We have not done or taken anything that Happy did not agree to in writing. Sadly, Happy did not honor her agreement with the brand. Happy Similani were given ample time to remedy her breach. This was supposed to be Happy Similani's store, but after paying 2.8 million rands in full, in cash, she didn't even get the keys to the store. The full Yuns took her money and then tried to sell the store to the next buyer. This is what they do for a living. And, you know, Piet is just hungry for blood. He's just going after our man and he's doing it deliberately and he's enjoying it. And he thinks he's untouchable. I want to tell Piet right now you've... You, you, you've messed with the wrong one. Beautiful Yoon will tell anyone who will listen that the 345,000 Rand franchise license fee is fully refundable. But that's simply not true. You will not get your refund. Well, at least not without a struggle. And if you don't believe me, well, listen to the man himself in these astonishing voice recordings that were sent to carte blanche anonymously. Like, I think I get all a license fee here. These recordings expose Piet's true nature. Speaking to someone called Lorraine, he admits the promised refund is just a sales pitch. This is cheap, Lorraine. This is cheap. What do you think is refundable? Yeah. He then lashes out at Lorraine for disagreeing. He goes on to explain his modus operandi. But that's not where the deception ends, as our investigation reveals. This is Malfil Yoon's application for a protection order, a desperate attempt to intimidate the media. She asked the court to prohibit carte blanche from, and I quote, airing, interviewing, or contacting anyone relating to her or her company. The court did not grant this order, yet the Phil Yoon's are claiming that it did. Now, if you'll go to these lengths to try and gag carte blanche, you must have something to hide. Since the master license agreement was cancelled, the Phil Yoon's have no right to use the name. Tammy Taylor U.S. sent them a cease and desist notice. So why have they continued selling franchises and products? We asked both Piet and Mal for an interview, but they referred us to this press release. The company owned by Melanie Phil Yoon registered the trademark in South Africa. The South African courts do not recognize American law and the trademark shall remain the property of Melanie Phil Yoon until a South African court rules otherwise. But that is a lie. Carl Bredenkamp is a patent attorney specializing in intellectual property law. A company called Just Smart Mobile registered six trademarks for the name Tammy Taylor, or really for logos, and including the name Tammy Taylor in the logos. And this was done in June 2016. Just Smart Mobile belongs to Mal Phil Yoon. But in 2018, she signed over all her rights to these trademarks to Tammy Taylor US, as this deed of assignment proves. So these applications that were filed by Just Smart um, are now in the name of Tammy Taylor Nails Inc. In other words, the US company. Tammy Taylor Inc. now owns 11 South African trademark registrations and Mal Phil Yoon owns none. From this, you can see that Tammy Taylor US 
then filed the word mark or just the name, the words, Tammy Taylor, mm -hmm. unstylized, not as a logo, just Tammy Taylor. And then they also filed three logos. Everything you see here from the name to the product to the logo is intellectual property. And it is intellectual property owned by Tammy Taylor Incorporated, a company registered in the United States of America. Now, since the master license agreement between Tammy Taylor US and the Full Yoons has been cancelled, all of this is a trademark infringement. The franchisees are exposed. I would strongly suggest that they contact the Tammy Taylor US to get authorization again to use the trademarks. The distribution agreement was cancelled in April and Tammy Taylor US no longer supplies the full Yoons. So what fake products are they using? Keystone Cosmetics is an American company manufacturing nail products at their factory in New Jersey. Their European office is based in the Netherlands and it's from here the full Yoons are buying generic products. Here's an invoice for over 5,000 euros of gels and powders from Keystone Cosmetics. They order through Malful Yoon's company called Nectarcroft, the same company that was ordering authentic Tammy Taylor products. We called Keystone local representative Yvonne to ask about this order. Are you aware that Nectarcroft is actually Tammy Taylor nails? I don't answer these type of questions because all our customers are confidential. An insider revealed the full Yoons are also importing bottles and jars and then rebranding them with fake Tammy Taylor labels. This is an authentic Tammy Taylor nail kit from three years ago. This is the real deal. Manufactured, packaged and labeled in the United States. Everything has got the TammyTaylor.com website on it. But now some of the labels show .co.za while others are clearly not up to scratch, as Mal points out to her staff in this leaked video. Funny printing come no has bus off. It's so bad that you can it so mark on them. Okay, go. In another leaked video, she places authentic Tammy Taylor jars in front of the fake jars that need labeling. You know, it's a belief me die for them. The dog is the bag for me. To that on some stickers we create me. And there's gonna be a lot of But it is me. So where are the labels being printed? Our investigation led us to this warehouse in Midrand. I just wanted to know, did you print these labels? Does that artwork look familiar? Yeah, the artwork does look familiar. Not sure if it's the exact same artwork because they sent a lot of iterations of it, but uh, we have printed something similar to this. Further investigation led us to this industrial park in Pretoria. The owner of the Marvel Group showed us some work he's done for Tammy Taylor. Basically what we do is they send us the artwork and mm -hmm. we print directly onto the, onto the bottle. Ah, but you see what it says here, you know, it still then says made in USA. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is not the USA. No. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> well, that amounts to trademark infringement and that also constitutes counterfeiting because it's not a product that emanates from Tammy Taylor US. Just to be clear on this, Carl, this is all illegal. It's all illegal, yes. Counterfeit products could be confiscated and destroyed. Which brings us back to the policeman who arrived at our producer's gate. And can I see the other side, please? Which side? Mr. Matar. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Matar, which police station are you from? From Gasfontein. From Gasfontein. Yes. Detective Mudau was from Gasfontein, Pretoria. Sources confirm he was at Tammy Taylor head office when a disgruntled franchisee was arrested last year. We played him this video and Mudau confirmed he's the one in the green shirt. But why would the same officer keep turning up? Insiders allege he's moonlighting. Alleged. Yes, it's alleged. Alleged. Yes. You don't have anything, any proof, no, anything. It's alleged. That's what people do. They make you allegations. Know, those, those, so I'm asking you. Those are serious allegations. Yes, so I'm asking is it true or is it not true? That's all. No comment. Okay. During the investigation, we approached 72 people we were told had lost money to the franchisor. 36 did not respond, 15 said they were happy, and 21 confirmed they are unhappy. Last week, Tammy Taylor USA dropped the bomb. 
they contacted the franchisees on Instagram to say the full Yoons no longer have the right to use the Tammy Taylor trademarks or maintain or grant new franchises. They are aware of counterfeit products being sold and are offering their help. In an interesting twist, Tammy Taylor's Santon City became the first to jump ship and announced they will be rebranding to Sweet Escape Beauty. Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find carte blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.